Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we will talk about array lists in Java. And here is our outline. First of all, we will see what is an array list and how we can create an array list. After that, we will see how we can add, access, change, and remove an item inside an array list. And finally, we will talk about the size of an array list. So let's get started. First of all, what is an array list? You can think of an array list as a resizable array, okay? So as you know, the size of an array is fixed. When we create an array of 10 elements, for example, we cannot store more than 10 elements inside this array. And 10 elements will be allocated inside the memory, right? But in the case of an array list, the size of the array list is not fixed. It is dynamic. In other words, the size of the array list can change according to the elements inside it, as you will see in a little bit. And we can use an array list to store elements just like we store elements inside an array. And also, an array list is an object. So let's see how we can create an array list. First of all, we will use the array list class. And after that, we will put angle brackets as you can see. Inside these angle brackets, we will specify the type of this array list. So what is the type of the elements that we want to put inside this array list? Okay? So in this case, we want to create an array list of integers. As you can see, I'm using a class that is called integer. I'm not using the primitive type. So keep this in mind, okay? And after that, we will specify the name of this array list. In this case, it is called integers. So this over here is an object of the class array list, and this array list object is going to carry integers. At this point, it is null, okay? So let's instantiate it. I'm going to assign integers to be equal to a new array list followed by angle brackets and then parentheses. So this over here is the constructor of the array list class. So we are creating an array list inside the memory and we are assigning its address to the variable integers. So now we can use this variable to store the elements in our array list, okay? Now notice that when we instantiate this object, we don't re-specify the type over here. It is enough to specify the type when we declare the object over here, okay? And of course, we can do this in one statement. So we can have something like this. We are creating this array list of integers and allocating it inside the memory. Now suppose that we want an array list of strings. We will do the following. We want an array list of strings. In this case, let's call it fruits and let's instantiate it inside the memory. Okay? And now let's create an array list of doubles. So we want an array list and the type in this case is the wrapper class that is called double. The array list is called doubles and let's instantiate it. Alright? Now, as you can see, when we are creating the array list, we are not specifying the size of the array list. Previously, when we created arrays, we had to specify the size of the array. But in the case of the array list, in a little bit, when we add elements to this array list, the size will grow automatically, okay? And we can put as many elements as we want. Now, let's have a look at this note over here. In an array list, we can store objects. So, for example, we can use the types string, integer, boolean, double, character, etc. But we cannot store primitive types. So, we cannot store an int or a boolean or a double or a character like this. This is why over here and over here, I use the wrapper classes integer and double. We cannot use primitive types like these ones over here, okay? But let me tell you this. After we create this array list that is called integers and has the type of the integer wrapper class, we can store integers in this array list normally. For example, we can store the number 5 in this array list with no problems. What's important is that when we specify the type of this array list, we should use a wrapper class. Okay? Now let's talk about adding an element to the array list. So let me tell you this. When we create an array list object, this object has some methods. One of these methods is the add method. And using this method, we can add an element to the array list. Previously, we created an array list of strings and we called it fruits. So let's add some elements to this array list. First of all, I will use the name of this array list, which is the fruits. And after that, I will call the add method. And since this is an array list of strings, we should give a string as an argument to this method. So over here, I'm adding the string apple to the array list. And after that, we are adding banana and after that strawberry. And finally, we are using the println method and we are printing the name of this array list. In this case, a string representation of the array list will be automatically printed. And this will be the output. As you can see, we have three values inside this array list. And these are strings, okay? Now, as you can see, when we use the add method, the elements are automatically added to the end of the array list. So initially, the array list was empty. So when we added this string over here, it was the first element in the array list. After that, we added this string, 
And as you can see, the banana string is added after the apple string. So this string over here was added to the end of the array list. And after that, we added this element. And as you can see, it is the last element in the array list. So by default, the add method adds the element to the end of the array list. Now, what if we want to add an element at a specific index in the array list? In this case, we will use another definition of the add method. This method is overloaded. Have a look over here. I'm using the add method and now we are passing two arguments to this method. The first argument is specify the index at which we want to add the element to the array list. In this case, I'm adding this string at the index 0 of the array list. So now if we print the array list, this will be the output. As you can see, this string is now the first element in the array list because we added it at the index 0. And as you can see, all the other elements are shifted automatically. So the first element is now the second element. And the second one is now the third one. And the last one is still the last one. But what's important over here is that all of this is done automatically. Okay? Let's see another example. I want to add this string at index 2. So let's see. This is index 0, then 1, then 2. So we want to add this element over here in the place of this string, right? So if we print the array list, this will be the output. As you can see, this string over here is added at this position, which is index 2. And the other strings are shifted automatically. So I hope that you can see the power of using an array list. Suppose that we want to do this using an array. In this case, we have to iterate over the array and shift the elements. And after that, we will add the element at the index that we want, okay? Now let's talk about accessing an item inside the array list. In this case, we will use the get method. When we were working with arrays, we used the brackets. But in this case, we cannot use brackets. We have a method that is called get that will get an element at an index. Now I want you to suppose that our fruits array contains three elements. Apple, banana, and strawberry. Okay? So have a look over here. I'm printing fruits.get0. So this will give us the first element inside the array. So in this case, we will print apple. After that, we are printing the element at index 1. So this will give us the second element. So in this case, we will print banana. And finally, we are printing the third element, which is at index 2. So strawberry will be printed. So as you can see, in an array list, the elements are also indexed starting from 0. Now let's talk about changing an item in the array list. In other words, we want to assign an element in the array list to be equal to another value. Okay? So in this case, we will use the set method of the array list. And this method takes two parameters. Suppose that we want to assign the third element in the array list to be equal to another value. So have a look over here. We are calling the set method. And after that, we will specify the element that we want to assign. In this case, we want to assign the third element. And after that, we will give it the value. So over here, we are assigning the third element in our array list to be equal to this value over here. Okay? So this will change the value strawberry to the value orange. So if you print the array list, this will be the output. Now keep in mind that strings are immutable. And when this set method is executed, we are simply assigning the third element to be equal to this string over here. So what happens exactly? The third element in our array list is referencing this string, right? So now it will be changed to reference this string over here. And now this string over here doesn't have an object that is referencing it. So it will be removed from the memory using the Java garbage collector. And remember, this happens because the strings are immutable, okay? Now let's talk about removing an item from the array list. In this case, we will use the remove method of the array list. And we have two options. We can remove an element by the index and we can remove an element by the value. In this case, the equals method will be used. Let's have a look at removing value by index. Suppose that we want to remove the second element from the array list. So we will call the remove method and give it the index 1. So we want to remove the second element. So now if we print the array list, this will be the output. As you can see, the second element is removed and the array list is adjusted automatically. Okay? Now what if we want to remove an element by value? As I said, the equals method is used in this case. So suppose that we are removing the string banana from the array list. So in this case, we will iterate over the array list and we will compare each element with this argument over here using the equals method. When we find an element that is equal, we will remove it. So if we have the value banana in the array list, after we print it, this will be the output, okay? Now what if you want to remove all the elements from the array list? In this case, we will use the clear method. And this will remove all the elements. So over here, I'm calling the clear method on the fruits array list. And after we print it, we will see an empty array list like this. Okay? So as you can see, an array list is much powerful than an array. 
and it is easier to use. Now let's talk about the size of the array list. To get the size of the array list, we will use the size method. And in this case, the size of the array list represents the number of the elements that are currently inside the array list. Okay? Now suppose that our fruits array list has three elements. So over here, I'm printing fruits.size. So this will print three. After that, I'm going to remove the element that is equal to banana. And after that, I'm printing the size and this will print two. And then I'm going to add an element to this array list. And after that, I'm printing the size. So this will print three. Finally, I'm going to clear the array list and then I will print the size and this will print zero. As you can see, the size of the array list changes according to the elements inside it. This is called a dynamic size. The size can be changed after we create the array list. Okay, so this is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.